Welcome to ICA's online worship service. My name is Santosh, and I love that you've joined us. Today, we're going to exercise our faith in Jesus Christ through singing, giving, studying the Word, prayer, fellowship, and sharing. So, let's get started. Psalm 32, 1 says, Blessed is the one whose transgressions are forgiven, whose sins are covered. Where does happiness come from? The scripture tells us that blessedness or true happiness doesn't come from beauty or prestige or wealth. Happiness comes upon those who have received forgiveness of sin. Jesus Christ offers us a full, instantaneous, and irreversible blessing when he died on the cross for our sin. Our goal today in worship is to magnify the grace of God in Jesus Christ through the power of the Holy Spirit. Let's proclaim the good news, treasure God's presence, and live as forgiven people for His glory. So sing with all your heart, mind, and body with joy. We are forgiven because of what Jesus has done for us. Wherever we go and we will 
will not be afraid For God is with us all the way We will stand firm and strong And this will be our song Through it all, God is faithful Never changes when we rise or when we fall. God is with us, with us through it all. In a world ever changing, there are times when we feel alone. God is with us, He's in our lives wherever we go, and we will not be afraid, for God is with us all the way, and we will stand firm and strong, and this will be our song. for some of you financially. Some of you don't have an income. We pray God will shower his provision upon you. If you need someone to pray with you, please contact us. Scripture says all must give as they are able, according to the blessings given to them by the Lord your God. Give as you are able, remembering that it is a privilege and that a tenth belongs to God. Those of you who can give generously, do so with a cheerful heart. In this time of desperation When all we know is doubt There is only one salvation we believe In this broken generation When all is dark you help us see There is only Jesus Christ. 
Christ. We believe in the Holy Spirit, and He's given us new life. We believe in the crucifixion. We believe that He conquered death. We believe in the resurrection, and He's coming back again. We believe. Let our faith be more than anthems Greater than the songs we sing And in our weakness and temptation We believe We believe in God the Father We believe Jesus Christ, we believe in the Holy Spirit, and He's given us new life. We believe in the crucifixion, we believe that He conquered death. We believe in the resurrection, and He's coming back again. We believe. from you can break through the darkness one touch from you can heal the broken hearted one touch from you can move every mountain one touch from you is all we need one touch One touch from you can heal the broken hearted. One touch from you can move every mountain. One touch from you is all we need. One touch from you is all we need. And I believe in God the Father. I believe in Christ the Son, I believe in the Holy Spirit, our God is three in one. I believe in the resurrection, that we will rise again. Oh, I believe in the name of Jesus, I believe in God the Father, I believe in Christ the Son, I believe our God is three in one. I believe in the resurrection that we will rise again. Oh, I believe in the name of Jesus. Oh, I believe in the name of Jesus. Oh, I believe in the And He's given us new life We believe in the crucifixion We believe that He conquered death We believe in the resurrection And He's coming back again We believe We believe Shalom and peace to you in Jesus' name. I'm so glad you joined us for this time of singing, studying God's Word, 
and praying together. I know this is a tough time for many of you. The whole world is in a state of fear and hearts are filled with doubts. There are so many uncertainties and unknowns and lack of clear direction. You may be facing adversity, financial struggles, disappointment and trials, and you're seeking God's help. We are here to share the good news that Jesus Christ is able to dispel all your anxieties and all your doubts and grant you peace and joy. I want to share with you how the risen Lord Jesus helped a person to move beyond doubt to faith and confidence. Today, you may be struggling with many doubts, especially spiritual doubts. Now, we all struggle and have doubts. Doubt means to be uncertain even with regard to new opinions or even truths. Now, doubt is a God-given protective mechanism. For example, if you tell me that drinking poison will not hurt me, I will doubt you. If you deny that Jesus Christ is the virgin-born, crucified, and risen Son of God, I will doubt you. But without a healthy dose of doubt, you will become a prey to every kind of evil. Doubt is bad when you intentionally remain in it and allow it to fester and affect your thinking and you become a cynic, a skeptic, and possibly an agnostic. One of the 12 disciples of Jesus was a man called Thomas. He has often been labeled as a skeptic, unbeliever, and even a stubborn mule often called the Doubting Thomas. Jesus does not scold or compliment Thomas for his doubts, and he will not scold us either for our doubts. Jesus did not compliment Thomas for his doubts, nor will he compliment us. But he helped Thomas, and he will help us move beyond doubt to faith. What was the nature of Thomas's doubt? Let's read John chapter 20, verses 24 through 29. Now, Thomas, called Didymus, or the twin, was not with the others when Jesus came. They told him, we have seen the Lord. But he replied, I won't believe it unless I see the nail wounds in his hands. Put my fingers into them and place my hand into the wound in his side. Eight days later, The disciples were together again, and this time Thomas was with them. The doors were locked, but suddenly, as before, Jesus was standing among them. Peace be with you, he said. Then he said to Thomas, put your finger here and look at my hands. Put your hand into the wound in my side. Don't be faithless any longer. Believe. My Lord and my God. Thomas exclaimed. Then Jesus told him, You believe because you have seen me. Blessed are those who believe without seeing me. Now the story of Thomas is very important. His name is mentioned in all the four Gospels, but only Apostle John in his Gospel describes three interesting things about Thomas. John mentions Thomas in his story of Jesus raising Lazarus from the dead in John chapter 11. On that occasion, when Jesus announces his intention of going up to Jerusalem, uh, Thomas rather gloomily and in a fatalistic tone said to the rest of the twelve, Let us go too, so that we may die with him. It was not a happy statement, but it shows that Thomas was loyal and devoted to his master, Jesus. The second time we see John mention him is when Jesus is meeting with the disciples in the upper room. And we read that in John chapter 14. Jesus said to his disciples, I'm going to prepare a place for you. When everything is ready, I will come and get you so that you will always be with me where I am. And you know the way where I'm going. No, we don't know, Lord, Thomas said. We have no idea where you're going. And how can we know the way? Jesus told him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. Now Thomas appears in this passage as a practical man, an honest man, one who did not pretend. So his reaction to the resurrection story is of great importance to us. The third time Thomas is mentioned 
is in the text we are studying in John chapter 20, where John tells us now that Thomas was one of the 12. Now, without Judas, there were only 11. The term, the 12, was the name, the group, uh, name of the group that, and it was retained even though the group now lacked one member. He was also known as Didymus, which in Greek meant the twin. And this is the meaning of the Hebrew word which we transliterate as Thomas. Thomas was not with the others when Jesus came to them on the first resurrection day or the first Easter day. John simply states that he was not present. He does not give any reason. Some say Thomas was a pessimist and he saw the death of Jesus as the end of everything. The twelve had stood for and therefore there was no point in continuing to meet. Thomas's problem was unbelief. Jesus said to Thomas he was faithless, meaning not believing. Many today think unbelief is not a problem, but the Word of God clearly tells us that unbelief is a huge problem. The writer of Hebrews in chapter 11 verse 6 says, Without faith or belief, it is impossible to please God. When Thomas returned, others, of course, told him what happened. We have seen the Lord. It was a most wonderful experience and they were full of excitement. The way John records, they kept telling him, kept on telling him that we have seen the Lord. Now that's in the imperfect tense. But despite the repetition of the appearance of Jesus, Thomas was not convinced. He had to see for himself and not only see, he had to touch and feel his wounds. He says, unless I see in his hands the mark of the nails and thrust my finger into his side, I certainly will not believe. He uses a strong double negative. The literal translation would be, I will not never believe. Thomas was wanting proof. He knew what had happened and from a distance he had seen the Roman soldiers hammering the nails into Jesus' hands. He also saw the spear being thrust into his side. So Thomas was setting the conditions necessary for him to believe this incredible story of Jesus' appearance being repeatedly told by 10 of his best friends. The following Sunday night, a week later, Jesus again appeared to the apostles. And this time, Thomas was present. Again, they were uh, indoors and the doors were thoroughly shut. Jesus stood in the middle and said, Peace be to you. Without delay, Jesus said to Thomas, Put your finger here and look at my hands. Put your hand into the wound in my side. Don't be faithless any longer. Believe. He said to Thomas to do what he said he must do before he would believe that Jesus was risen from the dead. Dear friend, you can examine and inspect the life of Christ. You can study his life-giving words if you're doubtful and honest and expose yourself to the person of Jesus Christ and the truth of his words as recorded in the Bible, it will make a believer out of you and you will emerge as a stronger person and strong in faith. This was true in the case of Thomas. Once he recognized the risen Jesus, he confessed out loud, my Lord and my God. When Jesus stood before him and he recognized and saw the wounds and heard his familiar voice, Thomas makes that great confession. In one dazzling moment, Thomas came to realize that he was standing before Jesus, who he must now call my Lord and my God. No longer was he merely a great teacher or a rabbi or a prophet. He was a risen savior. He was the one who conquered death. He made a gigantic leap of faith and realized he was the Lord of Lords and God of this universe. By this declaration and confession, Thomas was saying three things. He proclaimed the resurrection of Jesus Christ. He is now a firm believer in the bodily, physical resurrection of Jesus Christ. The arguments are over. He's fully convinced. 
He is no longer a skeptic about resurrection. Second, he proclaimed the lordship of Jesus Christ. He addressed Jesus as my Lord. Thomas identified Jesus as the Jehovah of the Old Testament. Third, he also proclaimed the deity, the divinity of Jesus Christ. He addresses Jesus as my God, as the I am and the Elohim, the creator God of the Old Testament. This is the greatest confession recorded in the Gospels. Jesus then makes a pronouncement after his confession. You believe, Thomas, because you have seen me. Blessed are those who believe without seeing me. Thomas believed on the basis of what he had seen. And Jesus went on to say, Blessed are those who have not seen me and yet have believed. Now our faith needs to be built on the word of God and the spiritual and not just on the temporal and physical senses. John says these are written that you might believe Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Paul says that in Romans chapter 10 verse 17. Jesus approves the faith of Thomas but commends the faith of future believers who will believe without seeing. Now God used Thomas to preach the good news to the peoples of Babylon, Parthia, which is the modern day Iraq and Iran. And finally he came to my native state of Kerala, southwest of India in 52 AD established seven churches and was killed, literally speared to death for preaching the gospel outside the city of Chennai in South India. Today, the church of Jesus Christ in India is flourishing and many are confessing Jesus as my Lord and my God. Would you place your trust in this risen Savior and Lord Jesus Christ and recognize him as your creator God? You can approach Jesus with your honest doubts. He will not scold you. He will not condemn you. You study his life, his words, and pray to Jesus. He's a living savior and he will meet you at your point of need. Come to Jesus humbly. You probably heard of C.S. Lewis. He was one of the most brilliant minds and authors. He was a professor of English literature at Cambridge University until his death in 1963. Now he grew up as an agnostic, but he began to examine the life of Jesus. He realized there was only three ways he could look at Jesus. He was either a big liar or a lunatic or the Lord. He finally came to the firm conclusion that Jesus indeed was the Lord and God, and he became an ardent follower of Jesus Christ. Would you open your heart and place your faith in Jesus Christ? Would you accept him as the Lord of your life? He will remove the doubts and grant you the assurance you need. He will forgive your sins and he will give you the assurance of everlasting life. But you have to believe first. Unless you believe, you will not understand. You have to come to him by faith. Come to Jesus with your doubts and he will help you to move beyond doubt to true faith in the living God. Would you pray with me? Lord Jesus, I come to you with my doubts and fears. Jesus, would you dispel my anxiety and despair? Would you dispel my fears and doubts and help me to recognize that you are the only one who died for my sins, paid my penalty and defeated death and rose again from the dead. You are the Prince of Peace and a living Savior. Cleanse me, Lord, with your precious blood. Forgive my sins. Come into my heart. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Use me for your glory, even as you used Thomas. I ask these things in Jesus' name. Now, if you prayed this prayer for the first time, contact one of our pastoral team members. They will pray for you privately. Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus And to take Him at His word Just to rest upon His promise Just to know the safe the Lord 
Jesus, Jesus, how I trust Him, how I prove Him o'er and o'er. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust Him. in Jesus just to trust His cleansing blood just in simple faith to plunge me neath the healing cleansing flood Jesus, Jesus how I trust Him how I prove him o'er and o'er. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust Him more. Yes, tis sweet to trust in Jesus, just from sin and self to cease just from Jesus simply taking life and rest and joy and peace Jesus, Jesus how I trust Him how I prove Him more and more Jesus we come to the presence of God so that the living risen God may touch you and heal you. Shall we look to the Lord in prayer? A most gentle and loving Heavenly Father, I thank you for your shepherd heart that doesn't scold or condemn us when we go through a time of confusion and doubts, Lord. I thank you for the way you led your disciple Thomas when he was confused about the truth of resurrection. Lord, you walked an extra mile and went to him and cleared all his doubts and brought him back to trust in you. And that is why he was able to call you my Lord and my God. Like Thomas, many people in this world are going through a time of 
doubts and fears because of the situation that we are going through right now many people are discouraged but i pray that you may lead all those people into your presence in a very gentle way as you did with thomas so that they may understand the loving heart of god and restore them to trust in you but at this moment i want to intercede for various prayer matters around the world people are going through doubts and fear because of the loss of their jobs because of the loss of their loved ones i pray that you may touch them and strengthen them and restore back to the faith in the lord jesus who can give them the real peace and joy and satisfaction at this time i commit all those people affected with corona virus lord i pray for all those people who are on the forefront all the medical professionals the doctors and nurses and all those people related to that i know they are doing a great job but i pray that you may strengthen them this at this moment especially pray for all the aged people lord i know that they need your strength because they lack immunity i pray that you may strengthen their bodies and mind pray for all the government officials and leaders all across the world especially in new york and uh, many parts of europe and in india lord pray that you may touch and strengthen those people bring healing to the lives of the people lord i commit to uh, uh, all those people who are involved in mission work lord pray that you may use them in a in your hands in a tremendous way in this time of need lord pray for all the churches all across the world the icha churches the ipc churches and all other churches lord i pray that you may use your children at this time in some way or other way to bring restoration and peace to those people who are confused and are in doubt lord this afternoon i commit your servant in your hands who shared your word i pray that you may use him in your hands in the days to come in a more powerful way pray that the word that has been brought to us may bring restoration and peace and joy and healing to us lord i commit all those people into your hands who have committed their lives strengthen them lord as we spend another week in your presence lord continue to speak to us through your word lord thank you for hearing our prayers in the most loving and gentle name of our lord and savior jesus christ i pray amen and amen The Bible says blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness for they shall be filled. In these difficult times we are all hungry for connection and thirsty for inspiration. Our life groups which meet Tuesdays, Thursdays and Fridays via Zoom to study scripture are one way to start filling that hunger and that thirst. Email info@icalosangeles.com for details on how you can join. Summer will be here before you know it, and so will our Family Vacation Bible School or VBS. This year's VBS will be held July 14th to 17th in the evenings. The theme is Rocky Railway, Jesus Power Pulls Us Through. Mark your calendars and get ready for an amazing time learning about how we can do life with Jesus with power and perseverance. Don't let a virus keep you from being hungry and thirsty for righteousness. Don't let a pandemic keep you from living with power and perseverance. And don't let fear and doubt keep you from living with faith and trust. I love that you joined us today. If you felt this service was of value to you, let us know in the comments. You can also send us a direct message so our prayer team can be praying for you. And remember to fellowship, message or video chat with someone you can connect with. Talk about a time when God helped you exercise faith over doubt. Sharpen and encourage each other as you fellowship. Let's pray this benediction all together. 
Now, may the risen Lord Jesus Christ, the source and Prince of Peace, grant you his peace at all times and in every situation. May the powerful, distinct, and enveloping presence of the Triune God be with you all. Amen. God bless you. We'll see you next time.